Welcome back, everybody. Well, it's time for a good laugh. Well, he has a, a lifetime's worth of funny, touching, and sometimes heartbreaking stories about the people whose work has influenced him. The one-man memoir, The Echo of a Noise, by Peter Dirk Ace, is back. And this time he performs wearing nothing but a bar stool, a beanie, and a casual black ensemble. He's one of South Africa's, well, South African theatre history's most prominent satirists and theatre activists. Oiz has been enthralling and scandalising audiences with roles like Evita Pezudenhut and Bambi Kellerman since the 1970s. He is here in studio with us this morning to talk more about this masterpiece. Peter, very yes. good morning. How are you? Good to see you, good to have you. Thank you. But I always complain that every time, this is the, the, the last time you were here, you left uh, the Dani behind. Why did you leave Evita? Where is she? We Evita is in the Tilly house. She's in the kitchen, <laughs> kitchen where she's cooking for reconciliation. And she's already working on what to feed Vladimir Putin when he comes here in, uh, in August. Right. Oh, yes, that's very important because she cooks for reconciliation. You know, she okay. believes that uh, the way to a politician's mind is not through his brain, it's through his stomach. Mm. And if mm. you look at Grady Montage, ha ha ha, mm. 10 babies, you know. <laughs> I'm quite curious to know the, what she would be cooking for uh, Putin because if you look at Putin and the war in Ukraine there's and you're speaking of reconciliation? <laughs> always reconciliation, very important. You know, the material comes in every day. I mean, I have to really catch up yeah. with the material that, that just keeps moving. But the, the echo of a noise takes me further. I start uh, right back in the, the 50s, the 60s, developing my life, but also I grew up in a house of music. Mm, my parents mm. were pianists, and so Mozart was my best friend. Okay. And then, of course, uh, going to the Space Theatre in Cape Town, and then the Market Theatre up here during the 70s and the 80s, right. fighting that battle to try and have freedom of speech, uh, which we take for granted now that we always yeah. had freedom of speech, but yeah. we didn't, you know, and I keep on saying to people, freedom of speech is very, very fragile. Protect your, protect your democracy, you know, mm -hmm. and I, of course I focus on the mock in democracy and the con in reconciliation, and that's a full-time job. <laughs> full-time job indeed, yeah. right? <laughs> And your current show, The Ego of a Noise, is a stripped, uh, you know, stripped down one-man show. Mm. So what kind of challenges did you encounter as you're preparing for this show compared to your previous productions, of course? Well, I didn't have a government writing my material. That's number one. Yes. You know, I really had to go back into my life and the life of my family, but also realizing that an audience has their life. So how much of my life would actually reflect on them? And it's amazing how people have seen my show and said, I've also been there. I don't know where you come from, but I know mm, exactly mm. where you are now. Yeah. And that was an, a, a great adventure. And it was quite interesting to try and find out what I was brave enough to confront. I think the most frightening and extraordinary thing in the story is, I only found out that my mother was Jewish after she died. Really? So, so how is it possible that I lived with a Jewish mother and nobody talked about it, nobody told me. I was thrilled when I found out. Not even her. No, but you know, she came from Nazi Germany, came to South Africa, married an Afrikaner. Look, Afrikaners fight with everybody. They don't like anybody. So <laughs> you don't want to get involved with some more nonsense there. And I don't know, it's, I haven't got an answer to the question. Why did it happen? But so many people have said to me, well, our parents also don't talk. My black friends say to me, our parents who lived under apartheid don't talk about it. Mm. So we don't know. Mm. It's very important to share where we come from so we can celebrate where we are going. And yeah. this is what the echo of a noise is about as well. I mean, and speaking of that, I mean, uh, this is political and you deal with political issues, socioeconomic issues uh, in your performances. So how do you approach these sensitive topics in your performances in a manner that, uh, you know, will filter down very well to each and everyone who sees uh, your shows? <clears throat> well, I have to, first of all, not add noughts for effect. It's got to mm. be true. It's got to be real. Yeah. Um, I'm working on a new show which starts in two weeks' time at, at Theatre on the Bay in Cape Town called, uh, uh, called uh, uh, well, it's, <laughs> I'm 77 now, and people say that it's, uh, it's time to stop. And I say, why must I stop? They say, well, you'll sell by date. So the show is called Sell by Date. <laughs> and um, I really believe that life starts at 77. You know, people retire, and I say, why must I retire? There's it's absolutely re no reason retread. for you to stop now. Of course not stopping. Um, and so I've got to focus on all the realities of where we are today. Mm. The load shedding. The load shedding is a huge problem. <laughs> the fact that we have got so many people in power who shouldn't be in power, they should be in jail. You know, mm. so do I suggest on stage that people mustn't hide behind the Constitution and say, we are innocent under proved guilty? I think maybe South African politicians are guilty until proved innocent. 
Sure. It's a change. <laughs> Ouch. Because it's easy to prove yourself <laughs> to be innocent. But let's find out the guilty ones. And anyway, lots of humor in that. Not because it's yeah. funny, yes, but yes. because we fear it. And if you laugh at your fear, you can make that fear less fearful. It'll still kill you, but you've got your eye on it all the time. Right. So I have to keep my you eye on the ball. Yeah. Keep my eye on the ball. Yeah, yeah, you have it in check. And your character, Evita, has been a staple of your performance for many years. So how has her character evolved? Do you see any change or yeah, any evolution of a character? Well, a huge change during COVID. I mean, during COVID, Evita didn't have a life because she was, there was no theater. There was no communication. I grew a beard. Now you can't do Evita <laughs> right. with a beard. Oh, I loved it. I had a wonderful beard. But then I suddenly realized I found a little gray wig, which I'd bought years ago. And I thought maybe Evita hasn't been to the hairdresser because of lockdown. So she hasn't got dark brown hair. Mm. She's now gray, got gray hair, short hair. So now she looks different. And that has given her a new energy. Oh, yeah. um, and so she's very much there. I mean, the one thing I will never forget is sitting in Nelson Mandela's office as Evita Besaidner, waiting to interview him in 1994 for Funny Law, which is the series we made for Mnet. Yeah. Waiting for Nelson Mandela, the most famous man in the world. And he came in and he stood in front of Evita and said, Oh, Evita, you look so beautiful. Wow. And that's the very important. Evita must feel and look beautiful. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I mean, speaking of which, I mean, why is it so important to use comedy and humor as a tool for social commentary here in South Africa? Well, you know, I, I, there's a difference between comedy and humor for me. Comedy is the joke, which I love, but I usually tell the joke in the wrong way. It doesn't work. But humor is really, truly confronting things you don't want to think about. I mean, for example, the real life issues, that is real life issues. And also you walk into a room and somebody stands behind a door, your best friend, mm -hmm. and he goes, boo, and you go, ah, and you say, ah. Now it's that's humor. Aha! It's not somebody's going to kill me. Okay. It's my best friend. Okay. So okay. humor is a very Watch important you. thing because many things in our politics is not funny. Mm. I mean, poverty is not funny. Yeah. And all the terrible things that are happening in the 29th year of our democracy that should have not happened at all, not funny. But you have to confront it in some ways to make people go, aha, that's the problem. So that's where humor comes in. It's yeah. the only way. I can't see another way. Anger doesn't travel. I can't stand on a stage and say, you are wrong and this is wrong. I've got to bring an audience in and say, come on, let's see where we can go now yeah, and do it yeah. together. Indeed, indeed. Mm. And you know, you and I know that South Africa is a very humorous nation. And uh, there's just something, man, about finding humor in each and every problem that we face. Find, it makes things much more easier, but, isn't it? Absolutely. But find humor in the wonderful sounds that people make. Right, right. I come from Cape Town and I just love the sound of Cape Town. As he makes it and so I really, I really love meeting people and sharing with them their optimism. Sure. We have got such optimism in our country and also such good people in politics. I keep on saying, find the good ones. Mm. There are very fine politicians in every party. Tell them that we're looking at them, that we want them to get better and stop looking at the losers, which are always the people who are not going to tell us the truth and just steal more money. How much, how much more money? I mean, ha, ha, ha. there's so much material that I'll be busy for the rest of my life. Right. <laughs> Want to share more details about this show? Well, we're on to today at, 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 at th uh, uh, four o'clock okay. in the afternoon at, at the Monte Cassino Peter Turin Theatre. And tomorrow at three, I like to do the matinees mm -hmm. so people can get home before the lockdown and the, and the, and the, and the lights going down. Uh, and then we've got next week, Friday, Saturday and Sunday also with matinees. Uh, so people can bring their kids. Bring your okay. kids to my story. Oh, so, so it is child friendly. Yeah? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Mm. All right. Peter, lovely chatting to you. Eh? Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, that was the witty, engaging and deeply personal Peter Dirk Ace. Uh, talking to us about uh, his one man memoir titled The Echo of a Noise, currently showing in Monte Cassino in Johannesburg.